During Gamescom, Riker sat down with Chris Wilson and Jonathan Rogers to discuss Path of Exile 1, Path of Exile 2, gameplay, design philosophy, and much more. And today, I wanted to give my thoughts on that interview, reply to a couple of the questions, give my own opinions, and then I have something special at the end, so do stay tuned. If you like interview content like this, maybe if you want to see me interview some game devs myself, then do be sure to leave a like, let me know down below, and get subscribed so you don't miss it in the future. But for now, let's jump into the first question from the interview that I wanted to talk about. So we obviously Diablo 2 was like the beginning of the inspiration of what started, but outside of ARPG games, are there other games that you found inspiration in? I mean, for me, I honestly look at absolutely everything, um, especially when we're looking at designing things like leagues. Uh, we sort of look to any kind of game genre. I mean, at this, uh, you know, the most recent league, we're looking at sports games, you know, uh, this is the kind of thing that we're, uh, uh, that, that we're interesting. So uh, for me, it's just like absolutely everything. Um, but as far as PoE 2's like, you know, core gameplay goes, I mean, just a lot of action games, really. Like, I mean, I want to make sure that the, uh, the combat in PoE 2 is as good as possible so that you can just treat it like an action game and enjoy it on that level. And you don't necessarily need to know about all of the crazy depth of all the stats and everything that we've got going on uh, but you know you'll eventually find that and then that will be uh, you know something that you'll get into later on uh, but you should be able to enjoy it just on an action game level and I think I think that's something that PoE 1 was just not quite as good at uh, something we want to really make sure that PoE 2 uh, is extremely good at that just on an action level is, is very good. So pace of combat in PoE 2. This is kind of an elephant in the room and I do think that right now a lot of the statements like PoE 2's combat is super super slow is a little bit overstated. We saw a specific slice of a demo where the content was purposefully overtuned for the sake of appealing to the hardest of the hardcore fans who showed up places like ExileCon. So I don't believe this is fully reflective either of the endgame experience for PoE 2 or even the level of difficulty that PoE 2 will have. But I also agree that the combat in PoE 1 is not very good. Usually most of my builds tend to be kinda brain dead. Why would I bother to hit my guard skill when I can automate it with casting damage taken? Why would I deal with killing enemies when I can automate it and just hold down one button and fly through my map or walk through my map or teleport through my map or whatever I wanna to do to get through my map where half the time, all I need to think about is what loot I'm gonna pick up or not. So I really like that the idea is to allow you to enjoy, especially the early experiences of Path of Exile 2 as an action combat game. I like Dark Souls, I've had a ton of fun recently with Armored Core 6, and I even like a lot of the less difficult action games, things like Witcher 3 where you can get lost in a world and explore a narrative. So seeing elements of that come to ARPGs is really cool for me personally. And from what I've seen, this also makes the game far more appealing to people outside of a core Path of Exile fanbase. And when I hear that Path of Exile 2 is going to be slower paced than Path of Exile 1, what I hope that means is you no longer get to kill everything before you even see the monster, the monsters don't get to interact with you before you're able to interact with them, and ultimately, unless you have super, super, super ridiculous high levels of investment, things that are absurd and unrealistic even for most hardcore players, I kind of hope the toughest bosses in the game won't just last a couple of seconds. Though I also know that players are quite clever and good at min-maxing, so it's probably a pipe dream to think that people won't completely trivialize bosses after a few weeks with a bit of optimization. Because I think right now, the thing that's lacking in PoE 1 is the combat. The way I see PoE 1 combat when mapping is either I one-shot absolutely everything on the screen or absolutely everything on the screen one-shots me. And I'd really rather think about, all right, those two monsters on my screen are a threat. Everybody else, I'm not too worried about them. I can kill them. They're not gonna hit that hard, etc. And when I get to a boss, I'm not saying I should have to remember every single mechanic, yada, 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 but it would be nice to think, all right, here's the couple mechanics I need to worry about and I'll be able to deal with them. I fought this guy before, I know how he works. It'll take me, I don't know, let's just say 30 seconds to a minute. Boss dies, I get some neat loot. Uh, one thing to note, it's been talked about how with the changes to rarity, loot in PoE 2 from bosses is gonna be much more exciting because right now your best way to get a mirror is just to add a bunch of quant and monsters. And in PoE 2, it sounds like your best way to get a mirror is to actually kill bosses. That's exciting. I don't want bosses to feel like an afterthought the way they do in PoE 1, where rare enemies have completely eclipsed them. So overall, I'm excited for Path of Exile 2. I think the change of pace in combat will be good. And I also don't think it's going to be nearly as slow as some people are saying. It's just going to be slightly less fast than PoE 1. 
how do you know where to where to draw the line, what to concede on and what not? Like, do you, do you have some whiteboard with like, we will, like these are super core to us and then these are things that we can move on? Um, I honestly would never consider it a matter of concession. It's just a question that should always be asked. Is this going to make the game better or worse? Mm. Like, uh, the players have problems and um, it's our job to come up with solutions and those solutions are not necessarily what the players are suggesting. So it's just a question of that, right? Like, so it's better not to even consider what the player's solutions are with considering what the player's problems are we're coming up with our own solutions and it might happen to be that those are the same things the players are suggesting in some cases but i certainly wouldn't look at it as like here's what we're willing to concede on and that sort of implies this us versus them thing going on there which is not the case at all right like ultimately um we both the players and us want to make the game better um it's not like we're secretly like you know oh yeah we want to make life hard for the players no of course not right like we want to make the game as good as possible so that's always what we're looking to do the thing i really 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 want to stress here it's not about us versus them and when it becomes about us versus them, when people start to frame things as the developers are intentionally trying to make the game worse or they are intentionally hating players, I find the end result is not only unproductive, but it's destructive to the games industry. It means that developers face harassment online. And it means that things which are often non-issues get blown out of proportion and sensationalized, then weaponized and used against the very same developers who are trying to make the game better for players. That isn't to say that if you don't like an aspect of the game, you shouldn't say, I don't like this. But try to have a little bit of empathy here. Try to look at it from their perspective and say, all right, pretend for a minute you are a PUE dev. You see a problem that a lot of players have highlighted and you wanna fix that problem in a way that makes it better for everyone. Because here's the other thing. Sometimes a thing that's an issue for one player is the reason another player plays the game. To fix a problem that a majority of players like, you are going to take fun away from someone else. Because sometimes one person's fun directly hurts the experience of another person. And you have to make those hard choices. I often feel like this isn't thought of when it comes to looking at game developer decisions. And so next time there's something in PUE that you don't like, highlight a problem, tell GGG you don't like it, but look at it with empathy. Because it really isn't about us versus them they really do want to make the best possible Path of Exile for the most possible Path of Exile players. I really wanted to communicate this because I've grown up loving video games and playing them, and the more I see players look at developers as the enemy, the more I'm worried that's going to push people out of the game industry. It's going to encourage people to take that lucrative programming job at Amazon or Google instead of pursuing what they love and making video games. And that really would be everyone's loss. So you're going to be doing the cycle of uh, PUE 1, PUE 2 expansions launching, uh, I guess, midway between between each, right? Do you feel that could potentially lead to, to player burnout? Like, do you feel right now it gives players enough time to sort of refresh? Or do you think players can, can dig in and stay engaged? I've been asking people at Gamescom how much they play Path of Exile. Like, with, is it every league? How long of each league? And a number of people, not everyone, but a number of people will skip a league occasionally. In some cases, a guy said he likes to do every third league. That's the deal he's got with his wife, that he vanishes <laughs> for a month, uh, every nine months. And so this may apply as well when we're doing twice the cadence because of the Path of Exile 1 and 2 leagues overlapping, where you don't have to play everyone because of the full resets that occur with each one. You can skip it, and you'll miss out on the enjoyment of playing it, but if you have other life priorities, then that's okay. Players should manage burnout, but that's not a Path of Exile specific problem. There are a lot of things in their lives that are distracting them from an entertainment point of view, and they should always manage the way they're living. Okay, I wanted to highlight this question because it's a really personal one for me. I play Path of Exile for around one month per league. In the past, I actually did skip a lot more leagues before I became a content creator. And this is because, number one, I do enjoy Path of Exile, and I love the feeling... I'd say of League Start, but it's really of right after League Start, once my character's established and I'm no longer wearing scuffed garbage from the floor. But I also enjoy playing other games. Recently, I've been playing a lot of Armored Core 6. I left Baldur's Gate 3. I took some time to try out both Last Epoch and Torchlight Infinite with a new content. And I need to get back to playing Sea of Stars, looking forward to Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty. There's so many games. Oh, Assassin's Creed Mirage as well. And if you like checking out my thoughts on other games, etc., do check out my second channel, 10K Gaming, T-E-N-K-I-E-I-G-A-M-I-N-G. -E -I -I Link to that will be down in the description below. And when it comes to burnout, whether it's Path of Exile or World of Warcraft or RuneScape, any long-running game, 
I see a lot of people who are very bitter, very burnt out, and very jaded, but haven't taken a break in a long time, especially, especially among content creators. The I'm quitting, I'm back videos are kind of a meme at this point. So I do think this is something that you as a player or as a content creator need to think about. And how I was going to handle it personally is exactly what Chris talked about, where I'm going to play some Path of Exile 1 leagues, some Path of Exile 2 leagues, and I'm going to skip others. Maybe there's a league that's really, really good for one of the games. Let's just say it's a league that is as good as Sentinel was, where I played it a lot and I had a ton of fun with my build. I had almost a three mirror build because I had so much fun just min-maxing with increasingly better and better items that I smashed together with recombinators. If it's a league like that that I deeply enjoy, then I'm going to play it for a while. And if that means that I run into something where, oh, the PoE 2 league's starting, I'm still having fun in PoE 1, I think it's totally okay to skip that. On the other hand, maybe I decide, you know, I really like PoE 2. I love the leagues. And I don't play the PoE 1 league for a bit. Or maybe the PoE 1 league just happens to overlap with the newest Witcher game. And I decide to play that instead. With multiple leagues and a bigger cadence, eight releases a year instead of four, I think there's a lot more room to say, I'm going to pick and choose and play the best of Path of Exile, rather than playing everything. This is something that GGG has always talked about and always been fine with. Path of Exile is always going to be there. It's always going to be the game that you can come back to, but you don't have to play it all the time, every waking second. Taking breaks is healthy. That's what I do. And I strongly encourage you to do the same anytime you're not having fun with PoE. I mean, so Diablo 2, I mean, it had, what, a post-release, maybe five years max of, like, active development. I mean, you, you guys have been doing PoE longer than, than the, the, the lifespan of, of D2. In many ways, you guys are now setting the standards for the genre that, that everyone else is being measured to. You mentioned, I guess, to some degree that you've, you now kind of reflect on um, how other studios might perceive you. Do you feel any um, hmm, sense of responsibility or ownership within the genre of um of like being stewards of the arpg we're gonna keep making the best arpgs we can do and we want to keep entertaining arpg players and we want to be the constant that's always going to be there i think a contact at steam once said to us uh, upon our like you know 30th release or something at the you know at the top of the steam charts he said empires rise and fall but path of exile remains and we want to be that right like we want to be there as i think people can turn to regardless and other cool action rpgs will come out they'll do some awesome stuff they'll do some bad stuff we want to be there as something that people can rely on being able to find and um yeah and have a lifelong relationship with us last up there's the discussion about responsibility and stewardship in regards to the arpg genre now poe is in a lot of ways a constant Personally, I think it's very cool to see other games drawing inspiration from PoE, be that Torchlight Infinite and Last Epoch within the ARPG genre, or little indie titles that cite PoE as an inspiration, like Tiny Rogues, that are completely different and unrelated. While a lot of games have definitely drawn inspiration from PoE, like PoE has drawn inspiration from the greats like Diablo 2, Torchlight 2, and Titan Quest, for me at least, PoE 2 feels like the first game that's iterating on the PoE formula. And PoE 2 is going to be something new and interesting, putting the action back into action RPG. And for me, what sort of role or responsibility do I see GGG having in all this? Well, I think it's just about making their game and staying honest to the vision. I know, I know, there's plenty of memes about that. But the vision really has been why PoE turned out the way it did. Having a unified central goal that everything else relates to. And aside of that, the only other thing that I'd say, if I could wave a magic wand and have any one thing happen in terms of Path of Exile, is for it to never become a pay-to-win microtransaction-infested hellhole. That's really all I ask. I'm not saying, oh, there should never be bad leagues. That's a natural part of a design process. I'd certainly rather GGG try something new, cool, and interesting and have it fail than for them to never try it. Because some of their failed ideas have actually resulted in really good things later down the line with some refinement, player feedback, and implementation. So in short, I'd like to see PoE remain the game that you can come back to league after league, year after year. And I'm very much looking forward to what other games draw from Path of Exile in terms of inspiration. And now that I've talked about Riker's interview with Chris Wilson and Jonathan Rogers, I'm going to sit down with the man himself, 
to discuss a few more things in detail and get some of his thoughts. Huge thanks to Riker for sitting down with me and discussing some of this. He's awesome. You should absolutely go subscribe to him and watch the full interview for context on some of what we're going to discuss. One of the things that I've noticed in all the marketing and advertising for PUE2, all the gameplay that I've seen from yourself at ExileCon, everyone else, is the combat. And mm. I haven't gotten to play it yet. You have. What do you think PUE's combat does that's different from Path of Exile 1 or other ARPGs in general? Yeah, uh, good question. I think there's certainly a stronger feel of it being action-oriented combat and less, almost less like an action RPG, if that makes sense. So I, I'm going to make the comparison to like a Dark Souls game. Uh, imagine taking Dark Souls and now you're in this this top-down perspective. I really think having like the dodge roll. So you know, obviously rolling, or for those who don't know, rolling is a huge part of of Souls games to the point that. Uh, you know, there's meme videos about people just constantly rolling around uh, their targets and stuff. And I I don't know whether I was using optimal tar uh, tactics or not, but I did find myself rolling a lot in combat, particularly against bosses. Uh, that's when I felt the most like the sort of Dark Souls, uh, I don't know if it's an influence or, or just that feel. Um, and, and it just kind of made me reflect a bit on how far we've been coming with ARPG combat. You go all, you know, all the way back to like Diablo 1, uh, and, and you're just like, you're, you're really on that, what, 8x8 grid and click, click, click. And the combat is effectively just you click on an enemy and that's it. Like maybe you can do a bit of kiting, but that's kind of the extent of your, your combat tactics. Whereas now there's the smoothness of within certain attacks, there's movement built in to engage, to disengage. Uh, there's that classic example with the, uh, I, I remember even from before playing, just watching the the footage of the sorceress casting the meteor and like sort of backing away from enemies at the same time, which is such like that's that smooth animation. So it's all just really gelling together to make the combat feel uh, again, more action oriented. So the combination of the dodge roll plus the attacks having the movement, I think is what's really selling it. Yeah, and it definitely conveys in all the gameplay I've seen where it looks really, really smooth. I can absolutely see the Dark Souls inspiration. In fact, there's an enemy, it's called Death Pinwheel, I think. It's straight up the skeletons on the wheel from Dark Souls. There, <laughs> 100% people at GGG play Souls-likes. And I think it's really cool to see this inspiration from other genres and a focus on really good action combat. Because the way I build my characters in Path of Exile doesn't really incentivize good action combat. It's I press one button and everything on the screen no longer exists. You're I'm sure... the only one who does that, though. No one else builds their character like that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure I'm I'm completely <laughs> unique. But I really like a lot of the things they're doing in Path of Exile 2 to allow for some of that, but not quite the same degree, like how mm. projectiles have physics. So things can't off-screen you, you can't off-screen them, because the arrow flies and then just lands. Mm. That it feels interactive and engaging, which is something I often find is lacking in Path of Exile and even a lot of other ARPGs. The combat starts engaging when you're first leveling up, but then as you optimize more and more and more, be it in Path of Exile, Diablo 3, Torchlight Infinite, you engage less and less with enemies. Yeah, and, and it, I mean, it, it feels like that's what the players are trying to accomplish with their builds to get to a point where you have to, I guess, engage with the game less. Uh, so it's 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 odd because there does seem to be a segment of people that do desire more thoughtful combat, um, but others do like the sort of zoom zoom, and I, I don't know how to reach a point to make both these camps happy. I also don't know what the disparity is like. What is the percentage? How many people want slower, methodical combat, and how many people want zoom zoom explode maps with one button? Uh, I'm not sure of a number either, but I feel like anyone who wants Zoom Zoom will be playing the Huntress or something similar. And anyone who wants something a little slower and more methodical will be playing the Warrior. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. And as someone who's played a lot of ARPGs outside of Path of Exile, do you think, after having played it, Path of Exile 2 interests you more than Path of Exile 1? Will you play it a lot or will you just drop by occasionally for really big stuff? 
Uh, it definitely interests me. Does it interest me more than PoE 1? I think I see it as an opportunity to like get on board without feeling like I'm behind 20 leagues. Uh, while there is going to be content retained within PoE 2, uh, to some degree they're they're zeroing out the board and it, it will be a fresh start. And I think like for a lot of new players as well, it will be a good time to jump on in. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely, definitely excited. For me, it's always just about how much time there is to allocate to any individual game. I wish I had the time to play PoE every day. Like it's a game with it. There's just so much in it. Um, I, I'm always looking for, well, <laughs> before I became a content creator and I'm almost like kind of forced to uh, bounce around to different games or, or, or approach how I play games differently. Before that, I just was like a one a one game kind of guy. And so like I want a Path of Exile that's going to, you know, I can play for hours every day for years on one game that I, I just want a forever game. Um, yeah, so definitely looking forward to seeing what what PoE 2 is going to uh, going to deliver and always excited to see the ideas that GGG releases with their seasonal rollouts, their leagues. Uh, on the topic of leagues, then, is there anything from either a different ARPG or completely outside of ARPGs that you'd like to see added to Path of Exile, either as a core feature or a league mechanic. Because recently we had something inspired by Dota Auto Chess. Personally, I'd love to see a Magic of the Gathering actual card game implemented in PoE. What would you like to see? Mm. That's a good one. Mm. They, they've already like implemented, they, they, they've regularly blown me away with like what they're adding this like uh, you know there was the the i'm bad with the, remembering the names of all the leagues but when they added the tower defense that's blight the blight yes yes yeah so um and I, I know it was one league that wasn't as well received it was synthesis when they added the board game yes synthesis was the board game league yeah so like i was blown away like when they did the reveal i just love the idea like it's just a cool idea i know it wasn't as well received of a league, but I I love that they go for these ideas. Uh, it, it I'd, you know, it's better to go for a big crazy idea and it fails than to just always play it safe with something that's less interesting. Uh, another one that I really liked was um, the one with uh, the the board of the the people that you got to capture. Betrayal. Uh, betrayal. Yes, that one was really cool. So what could they add? Oh, I also love that they did um, that their April Fool's joke was amazing. Like, <laughs> yes, the the <laughs> right. Yeah, the, actually the adding battle a royale. battle royale. Yeah. And they did some really cool iteration on that afterwards with uh, custom skill trees and stuff. It really reminded me of the skill trees for Path of Exile Mobile, where the way they're simplifying oh, down, yeah. making it more approachable. That's fair, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Hmm. Yeah, so if I had to think of something that they haven't done, hmm. Some, okay, they're just random idea off the top of my head. Some kind of base building mechanic. Ooh, that'd be interesting. I don't, I don't know how to make it into something fun, but maybe like you're 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 creating some kind of persistent base, almost like an RTS element, maybe. Like, uh, what what is that? What is the game where it's sort of a, a an RPG RTS hybrid? Um. It's a frost something or uh you're like Frostbite? building a base pot yes yeah mm -hmm. i think like you build a base and you go through the different waves of like uh the phases of building a base and then the waves of enemies come oh no that's not frostpunk frostpunk is no. you're building a base up and then there's a storm and it's gonna cause the temperature to fall people will die etc. okay uh i know what you mean though is it they are billions maybe yeah yeah that's the i guess that was it yeah, yeah. Well, I, or maybe I'm confusing multiple games together, but yeah, I don't know. So maybe something like that could be interesting. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be neat. It's tough though to like manage it smoothly uh, to incorporate the like the disparate elements in a way that's engaging. I know that the most popular seat like the uh, leaks are always or tend to always be the ones where it's sort of just a more straightforward like okay, you do something and then waves of monsters come at you, and those tend to be the most like the, like the real crowd pleasers. Which, I mean, it's good that they, they, I feel like they kind of alternate between, okay, the more simple crowd pleaser one, and then try a more out there idea and, and hope that it lands. Yeah. The one thing that's kind of the exception to that is recently Forbidden Sanctum, extremely, extremely popular, very different from everything else in Path of Exile. I was 
genuinely impressed when I first played that. I said, you know, if this was a $10 indie game on Steam, I would have 100% bought it and be writing rave reviews for it. Awesome, awesome. Oh, do we have a, like a roguelite? Yeah, that's uh, Fupin. In, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. right. I haven't. Yeah, that's that one I haven't uh, dove into. But yeah, because that would have been my next suggestion of a roguelite. So they've done it already. There you go. Yep, they've done it <laughs> twice actually. The first time was the Descent Champions event, which is oh, I don't know six, seven years ago now. It was ages ago, and then more recently with Forbidden Sanctum, that's much more polished really cool, unique feeling. They made a whole bunch of new enemies for it, bosses, special end boss tied into the lore. Genuinely awesome. I can see why everyone loves it so much. You know the expression, uh, Simpsons did it? I feel like now, like, any game idea is going to be like, oh, yeah, Pee-wee did it. <laughs> yeah. GGG did it. Like... <laughs> yep. Yeah. And one other thing that stood out to me from your interview was... The idea of both player feedback and the you think you do, but you don't. Because mm. I do agree there are times where developers have to protect players from themselves. I think Game Maker's Toolkit has a really good video. I could be misquoting, maybe it's Adam Millard instead. Someone has a really good video on some of the ways in which developers protect players from themselves. In his interview with Echo Hack, Jonathan also talked about that, where the optimal way to play should be the most fun, because players will do yes. unfun things and often request unfun things because they're rewarding. And mm. as a dev, you have to say, no, 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 no. We're going to make the best way to play the most fun. Uh, how do you think players should give feedback? Because I know a lot of people want to, and even as a content creator, I want to, but I also want the developers to be able to use the feedback and not just get, you know, oh, this is awesome or, oh, this game sucks. Sure, yeah. Um, that's a great question, and I think in my case, what I've arrived at, and I've tried to steer people towards doing this uh, when they're making their uh, their forum posts, or I, I think uh, the vehicle through which you deliver that feedback isn't as important, uh, as long as you can get eyes on it, right? So whether it's a YouTube video, whether it's a forum post, Reddit, wherever you can to get eyes on it, I think in order to optimize uh, the effectiveness of that feedback, I think it's important to always frame it. I mean, okay, so there's always the taken for granted, like, yeah, avoid personal attacks, don't be don't be a jerk, you know? Yeah. But once we're past all that, I think you got to frame it in a way that it is clear why you are suggesting something. Uh, and so I think it's important to always start with what are you feeling and experiencing as a player? I think that is very valuable for a dev to work with. And I, I'm speaking a bit from experience of people coming into my streams and being like, hey, shouldn't they like add this? And I'm like, I don't know why, like you're proposing something, but I don't understand where is this coming from? Why do you think this is a good idea to do? Are you like, is it because you feel frustrated with a system, right? Is it that you're bored with something like you're proposing something, but where is it coming from? I. I run Dungeons and Dragons games. Uh, I do a lot of ho uh, homebrewing. So like we come up with our own our own house rules. And it happens sometimes that like my players are going to make suggestions like, oh, like why don't we add this? And I'm always like, OK, but why? I'm not saying no, but tell me why. I don't understand why you want to add this. So every time I make a design document for a new rule set, at the, at, at the start, I highlight what is the problem. And then we get into, OK, proposed solution. So it could be like, I, I find it frustrating to have to pick up so many things on the ground. Uh, so if you just skip to the solution, you're just assuming that people understand what problem you're referring to. So like, the, like you can, an example would be, uh, I want pets that pick up items. Like, okay, why? Is it because you like pets? Or, you know, is, no, it's because I'm frustrated that I have to manually click on all these things. Okay, well, how about instead of that, we just reduce the number of things you have to click on or, right, there's other things. And devs spend all day, every day thinking up ideas of things to do. They've probably already thought of at some point some solution to a problem. Maybe they've already workshopped it. Maybe they've already decided it's a bad idea. Maybe they've decided it's a good idea, but they're not ready to implement it yet. And hearing that you're experiencing this frustration is enough for them to revisit that and, you know, reprioritize it. Um, so yeah, I think it's always just really important to, to focus on what your feeling is, why you feel it's a problem. I know people like to give their ideas, but give the idea after you explain why you're giving that idea. Yeah, and that's similar to advice I've given people in the past, where I say make it constructive, 
and actionable. I.e., don't just say, oh, I wish Path of Exile was chess, because, well, what does that mean? We could definitely exactly. have... I guess that's another League idea, chess and Path <laughs> of Exile. Ah. Yeah. But in terms of my own personal feedback, I started with a traditional route of, oh, wouldn't it be cool if the game had this? And now I try to think of, okay, given some of the design decisions, what is it about the current game that really bothers me? I'm going to use mm. an example from a game that I played quite a bit of and that you might be familiar with, uh, Diablo 4, where what about enemies bothered me? Oh, it's the crowd control. So is it that it's too long? Is it that it's getting me killed? Well, even when it doesn't get me killed, it bothers me. And I realized it's just the loss of control of my character in a game that's so much about the rotational gameplay and the positioning feels really bad. And ultimately, I don't necessarily care if the crowd control is shorter or if I have to build my character around getting rid of it. I care about not losing control of my character as a result of things beyond my own actions. Yeah, that, that's uh, actually, I mean, uh, yeah, it's a frustration that I share that I've felt all the way, from, I remember from Diablo 3, because I don't mm -hmm. think any ARPG before that took agency away from a character in the same way. Uh, we'll, I would get immensely frustrated in the early days of D3 when enemies would apply a fear effect on me and I would my character would be running away. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I, I didn't... It doesn't feel good, yeah, to have that agency robbed of you, yeah. Yeah, especially when it's not a punishment for a mistake. Because if there's a giant, mm. you know, five-second cast, like in World of Warcraft, there's some of those, where the enemy does a five-second cast, you can interrupt it, or it AOE fears your raid, and it's like, well, you had five seconds to interrupt it or do enough damage or something. You weren't being punished randomly, you were being punished for making a mistake. Uh, mm. That's when it feels good, because, you know, okay, yes, this sucks, but I deserve that. I can do better next time. Right. Fair, fair. Yeah. Yeah. And then just to wrap up, I make a lot of content for Path of Exile. You've made content for a ton of ARPGs. You're one of the most veteran content creators. What would you like to see from us in the community who make a lot of PUE content, whether we're, you know, someone who's a PUE creator or someone who just wants to make a lot for Path of Exile too? What sort of videos or even non-videos would you like to see for players coming into that? Yeah, I think especially with PoE2, there's a lot of opportunity to bring in new players and transition them in in a way that is that that makes the game as accessible as possible. I think PoE2 will be more accessible than PoE1, um, but like I know a lot of players right now, uh, they try out PoE1 and they're like, this is this is too much. I feel like I need a PhD, and I, I try to tell people like, you don't have to learn everything right away. Um, but I'm not experienced enough to really tell them what they do need to focus on. So I think um, introducing things again in an accessible way, using relatable examples, also kind of demystifying the jargon or, or somehow, because like these games can get jargon heavy where you're, yeah. where you're using terms and, uh, uh, you know, especially once you start getting to deeper guides, it might be a lot of terms that someone who's maybe not seen every video might be lost and just kind of always bearing in mind maybe, okay, someone who's like watching this as their first video, how to make it as accessible to them, uh, I think would really help bring a lot more uh, uh, converts uh, from, from other games. Yeah, absolutely. And for anyone who's playing Path of Exile right now and is in that, I don't quite know how to get started, I would say find one content creator where you like their content, could be me, could be Riker, could be someone else entirely. Find one person, pick one build, stick to that for a bit, and find one league mechanic. So it could be that you like Blight, could be you like Heist, could be you like Forbidden Sanctum. Just pick one thing, do that, see how it goes, and then when you feel comfortable with that, move on to another build or move on to another league mechanic, but don't try to move on to a different build and a different league mechanic all at once. Good advice. Yeah. And thank you very much for coming on. I really enjoyed your interview with Jonathan Rogers and Chris Wilson. And uh, hopefully this is the first of many. Yeah, glad you enjoyed the interview. Thanks so much for having me. Again, Huge thanks to Riker for sitting down with me and giving some of his thoughts on this interview, Path of Exile 2, and the future of the ARPG genre. I'm very much looking forward to the PUE 2 launch. Most of my PUE 1 content isn't really aimed at new players. I tend to aim at, well, just stuff that I find interesting personally and want to talk about. 
which I hope other people also find interesting. For Path of Exile 2, I'm definitely going to focus a little more on new players, because I know a ton of new people are going to be coming into the game and into the genre in general. I also really like the way that both Chris and Jonathan discussed in a quite frank way how they handle player feedback and what it means to stand on the shoulders of giants. So again, please do check out Riker's full interview, which is up in the card down below, linked everywhere that I can. Oh, also, if you prefer reading to watching, then there are some key takeaways in a Mactual article that I'll also have linked down below. You can find all that stuff. And if you like this interview content, again, let me know. I'd certainly love to sit down with Chris or Jonathan or really devs from any of the games that I play because I find that stuff really awesome. Ask some questions, get some good discussion going and see what we can bring to the table. If you want to see more of this, again, do be sure to let me know down below. Leave a like if you liked it, and of course, get subscribed for more content. With that said, thanks for watching, and of course, a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for their continued support. For as low as $1 a month, you can help make videos just like this one possible. The link to that is down in the description. If you're looking for something else to watch, you can always check out my thoughts on the recent interview that Jonathan Rogers did at PAX West with Echohack, or if some of the other games I mentioned earlier piqued your interest, check out my second channel. Links to those are also down below. But that's all for me today. I hope you enjoyed. Maybe you learned something, and I hope to see you again sometime soon.